I'm Shahar. And I'm Nash, and we're with BuzzBooster.tv. Yes, and we have a very special episode. Yes, we do. We have some more interviews that we did at Blog World LA. Yes, fantastic. And it's all about you having your web show yes. and videos. Guess who Perfect. our guests are? Oh, we have some very special guests this yes. time. Yes, Todd Cochran from Blueberry will talk to you about web shows and how to have them stream on TV. That's right. And Julie Perry yes. is going to talk about YouTube video marketing. And we, we are going to go to the, the third step third of step. our negotiation process. Mystery and rituals. Exactly. And if you missed the last two, just watch the last two Don't episodes watch. and you will have that. Enjoy. Enjoy. So let's talk about the negotiation process. Remember, we already talked about finding the broken windows and joining the tango, joining the conversation, going inside their minds. Well, then, after you did all, all those things, you have to incorporate some mystery and rituals into the negotiation. And this is very, very important for several reasons. One of them is that it shows the prospect that you have a process in place, that things are structured. When people feel that they're dealing with a business that has a structure and has processes, they, the anxiety levels goes down because they understand that there is a process, they know what they are doing, so it's very important. But also because during the negotiation, you actually want some tension going on, a good kind of tension. And by incorporating mystery and rituals, not having all the questions questions answered, for example, you're doing that. Let me give you one example. It's not the only way of doing that, but when we have a client in our office and we are going through the negotiation process in, in order to sell a consulting package, for example, or, or, a marketing, or a mentoring package, what do we do? We go through the broken windows, I told you before, the how, the join, the conversation, and then what do we do? Some of the questions, we will answer or whatever questions they have, but we kind of see the little bit saying, and we will go into the dynamics into you know, going deeper or we will go uh, and show you step by step once we are working together. I'm doing two things here. I'm leaving some components out of the question while at the same time uh, working on presumptive assumption that they are going to join the program and then during the program everything will be un uh, unveiled for them so they will have all the questions. You want to have a veil of secrecy. It's just a little bit. It's not that you're not answering any questions. Uh, in, during our process, after we, we allow them to speak so we could find the, the broken windows, we start showing them the possibilities and showing them things that they could accomplish by working with us. So giving them a glimpse without giving the full picture. Okay, and then, for example, when we are asking for the sales in itself, we always show them in the monitor. We never talk about the packages. We allow them to read and think about the options that they have. Yes, this is at the closing process, but it's part of our ritual. Uh, we also point the prices. We never mention them. We never talk the word dollars and money, right? We, we leave that in the process. So that's the reason. Uh, why we do this. Mo shows the structure, follows always the same kind of ritual and offers some mystery in the process. Extremely important. Nashla will now explain to you exactly how this process works here. Alright, so I want to go a little deeper on how you can incorporate mystery and rituals in your business. Okay, now you'll have to figure this out on your own as far as how it applies to your specific business. But I'd like to give you an example today of a company who's doing that really well. Okay, so it's a very out of the box uh, example just so that you can see how, how deep or how, how far away you can go with this. Okay, so there's a guy in New York, he sells grilled cheese, right? It's a commodity. I mean, you can go down the street to this hole in the wall place and get a grilled cheese for three bucks. But there's this one guy in New York. He sells grilled cheese and it's not for three bucks, I guarantee it. But there's only one way you can order that grilled cheese. And that is you send him a text message. Send him a text message. And you say, hey, I'd love to order grilled cheese. Uh, and he'll respond you back and he'll say, okay, I'll meet you on the corner of this and this street at this time. I'll be wearing a red hoodie. See you there. So at that time, you go to that street, you spot the guy with the red hoodie, you hand him the cash, he hands you a brown paper bag, and off you go on your separate ways. 
And it's the only way you can order these grilled cheese from this guy. It's, it's like you're dealing drugs, right? But th th look at what he did. He incorporated mystique and rituals extremely well in the process of ordering the, the grilled cheese from him. To the point where he's had tons of media attention, people talk about him, and now, of course, he's expanding. But, see, he, he has the, mis the mysterious components of, hey, Am I, what are people going to think of me when I go there and when I order? Uh, am I going to see the right guy? Is he going to be there on time? Is it going to be good? I send him a text message. I can't call him. Why can't I call him? So these are questions that you're asking but that are keeping you hooked into this entire ordering process. Uh, the rituals, the only way you can do it is by uh, the text message. And then you meet him at that time and he determines what time and, and what street. So all these unknowns and all these things that happen every single time you order are part of this process of this ordering process that makes you want to buy more and more and more and makes you more importantly want to buy from him and not from the hole in the wall place down the street right so that's a very broad and very different example of how to incorporate mystery uh, mystery and rituals in your business now you have to think okay how can I do that in a way that will be a little bit memorable that will keep my clients on edge thinking hey uh, is, is, is this this experience of ordering for you and, and uh, do it in a way that you cannot do it often like every time you that it uh, becomes a system to you where every time there's a prospect or whatever it is you implement those rituals just like Shahar mentioned previously uh, how we some of the rituals that we do during the negotiation skills here negotiation process here where hey they don't see the pricing uh, they we always show it to them we offer them chocolate things like that those are components of rituals and mystique that uh, we implement in our business in our consulting business so think how you can do it in yours because it makes a magnitude of difference uh, it makes your business become perceived as a more, excuse me, <coughs> memorable business and, and also a, a business that's more structured and people like structure. That's my message to you. I'm here with Shahar and of course she's with Buzz Booster TV and she's one of our community members at uh, Blueberry.com. And I know that uh, a lot of you that uh, work sh with Shahar are, are business owners. And I think what I want to share with you guys today is the importance of really having your media and getting a presence everywhere. Today, the landscape is changing so much on how people consume media. Y you can't afford just to have a website and, and have that presence, or maybe just your Facebook pages. You know, you look here, uh, w this is the Roku device, and I don't know if you can see it on the video, but the Roku device is, is being sold nationwide in, in, in uh, Best Buy and a, a variety of other places as well. And to have a channel today on these devices gives you immediate exposure to millions of people. And just as Shahar knows, having a channel on Blueberry, having a show on Blueberry, allows her content to be, to be watched um, right on the television set with people kicked back in their lazy boy. And I think that's a beautiful thing today is we're, you know, we're all used to using our remote control, but you know, there's so much on TV, but there's nothing on TV. So here you've got the ability to watch great programming, just kicking back and, and you know, getting educated instead of being filled with whatever's on the tube that night. But um, as a business owner, you, you just cannot afford not to be on, on the internet with media and having content and being seen. Um, it's, just, it's just the way things are these days. So I hope that gives you a little insight. And see, that's cool right there on the big screen, yeah? Yeah. And tell me one thing, uh, how do you see the future of television now that anybody really can put a show together and start streaming through? It, it's equal to playing field. It really has because I talk to a big cable companies. I say, what does it take to get my content onto your cable company? And they say, well, about two years worth of lawyering and probably lots of dollar signs. Well, with just a small investment, you really can get onto these devices. You know, our company, Raw Voice, we build channels for companies on the Roku, Samsung Smart TV, Boxy, uh, Looky TV, a variety of different devices. But really what it is, is consumers like choices today. They just don't want to be confined to what the establishment tells them they have to have. So this is just, this is going to break out. Ultimately, all this technology is going to be insider televisions. You know, Apple's going to be coming out with an Apple TV for sure. You know, Samsung already's got it figured out with the Samsung Smart TV. That's why we're in that platform. And how many consumers does that expose you to? Not a micro audience, but millions of consumers. Everyone that has one of these connected TVs. And, and 
do you know a raw data on how many people have boxes today in the U.S.? And the last time we knew, this probably was approaching three million. Samsung has said that they will probably sell, well they said in 2011 they would sell six million internet connected television and Blu-ray players. You cannot buy a Samsung Blu-ray player today that does not have internet connectivity. This is like an $89 box. And you can access, of course you can access all the favorite stuff like Netflix and, and Pandora, all that stuff is there. But here's the cool thing, see on the screen? What do we got here? We've got Netflix, we got Amazon, we got Hulu. But who else do we have? We've got our networks. So you're on an equal playing field on these, on these televisions. And that, that's what really makes the big difference. Yeah. And again, it's growing. I think between all the devices, they might be about 11% of total media consumption um, from our network of 9,500 content creators, but it continues to grow. And are there possibilities of revenue for these shows? Absolutely. And, you know, we're all about helping those shows monetize. Matter of fact, we're adding a new feature this uh, week calling Meta Marks, where content creators are not going to have to rebuild their shows. They're just going to mark the media in certain places and they're going to tell them, here's where I want to add run. Here's where I want a hyperlink popped up. Here's where I want a survey to be shown. And ultimately, our goal is, is to move into some of the bigger name boxes that have to have some sort of a rev share monetization um, strategy. Because we're not going to get in some of the devices unless we're able to make those companies understand that this can help their, their shareholders, bottom line. So this is why we're introducing Metamarks. It'll be something publicly that we'll be talking about and sharing with other companies and hope that they, they introduce because we definitely want um, content creators to be able to be able to monetize their content everywhere. We're tracking over 130 devices that content's being consumed on today. So, you know, the web still makes up 40 or 50 percent of that, but the other 50 percent, millions of people are on their iPads, their iPods, their Blackberries, their Zooms, their window phones. So, you know, if you're not on all those devices, plus the set-top boxes, you're missing out. Yeah, you're, miss you're missing out on a percentage of, of your potential audience. And if people want to start uh, digging more into this, uh, what they have to do next? Well, you know, if, if you have a website already, um, you can start adding media to your website. That would be the first step. But you definitely want to get the di distribution. So we encourage people to use our PowerPress plugin with WordPress if they're running on WordPress. And kind of that's the gateway. Once you get your RSS feed, you know, people get scared when you say RSS feed, but we've made it real easy and, and non-intimidating to get everything set up correctly so that you can start to be ingested on sites like ours and other sites that are out there. But the main thing is we are the gateway, or at least Rob Waste in our communities has become the gateway to get into these devices for content creators that don't have the budget to talk to the lawyers to get the Samsung agreement or do the code to put into the Roku devices. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Julie Perry. I'm with Blast Media. We are an integrated PR and social media agency, and I'm here at Blog World. And I wanted to give a quick YouTube tip for small to medium sized businesses that are maybe told that they shouldn't be using YouTube for whatever reason. It's just a bunch of kids throwing bricks at each other's heads. I don't know. Um, but that's not the case anymore. You can really uh, get some great business results by putting your videos that you're creating, online web video, up on YouTube and marketing it and promoting it there. Some of the benefits that our clients at Blast Media find are traffic and good lead generation and a lot of that comes by way of the discoverability and findability of having your content on what really is a social network, YouTube, but it's also a search engine. It's the number two search engine in the world, ranked just after the company that owns it, Google. And in fact, many people notice that Google will oftentimes pull YouTube content onto page one of its results. So if you're optimizing your videos correctly and placing them on YouTube, then quite often people are going to discover and find you based on those keywords that otherwise you have to spend tons of money on SEO companies and pay-per-click ads to get showing up on Google. Instead, go to the second best search engine out there that's getting the most queries a day of people looking to solve problems and put your videos there on YouTube and you can get yourself on page one of YouTube through YouTube video optimization a lot faster than you can get probably your own website on page one of Google for your top keywords that you're targeting. So we recommend to clients to make sure even if they have their own content 
uploaded and hosted on their own websites to make sure that they also upload it to YouTube and then optimize it well and make that a place where they can put out video with some sort of a call to action where the search engines will bring those videos up the audience comes through, finds out more information through video, and then is told where they can go for more information. And to do that, they can be sent directly over to your website. There are ways that you can do things on YouTube so that they can easily click over to your website. And then through that means you can either direct, um, we get a lot of direct sales that come directly from YouTube, or even lead generation, get them to subscribe to your email newsletter, whatever the case might be. So YouTube, we find, is a super powerful tool for search engine optimization, lead generation, list building. Um, did I say SEO? Okay, so now I've probably spoken too long. Good luck, happy tubing, and I hope you get some content, whatever it might be, even just segments of longer pieces up on YouTube and uh, test it out, see what you can do. Thanks. Hello, my name is Christine Porter. I'm the partner manager for desktop products at Telestream. Okay. Tell me a, a little bit about your product, Wirecast. Sure. I work with Wirecast, which is our live streaming application. It's a software application. You put it on your PC, you put it on your Mac, you put it on your desktop computer, laptop, whatever you have, and you plug in your cameras directly to your computer, and you can broadcast live from your desktop, streaming uh, media right over the internet. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, you talked to me before about Google+, Plus, the feature Hangouts, mm -hmm. and Wirecast. Mm -hmm. How do people use that? Well, I mean, that's a great way to bring together a group of people. You want to talk about a topic, you can have the chat, you can you can feature people right there. Um, we did that actually in-house in our studio just a couple weeks ago and it worked beautifully. The video quality is excellent, there was no delay and it was it worked really well. So it overcomes the challenge of only being able to talk to 10 people inside Google down. Plus? Correct. But putting that on a, on a live audience. and. Uh, can I record everything? Yes, you can, while you're streaming your broadcast, you can also be recording an archive copy so that you can save it for, for later. And you can do that at a higher quality to, to improve the quality of the broadcast. So they could even turn those things into products that they could sell? Oh, very easily, okay. yes. Tell me how to get in touch with the product, where they can get it. Well, you can download soft, uh, Wirecast for free off the internet at www.telestream.net. And under the products tab, you would select the Wirecast product download it, give it a try, it's full featured, it has some limitations with watermarking, but other than that everything works. And uh, give it a try, if you like it, go ahead and buy it. We have the standard product and we also have Wirecast Pro which adds some pro features like um, capture card support for example. There's a lot of people doing sports broadcasting so we have a scoreboard function in the pro product and lots of other great things. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. That was great! It was, you know what I like? What? That we are able to share very advanced strategies in the negotiation sales process yes. with them and you know small business marketing is all about you implementing small things that work and yes. we just share with you that and our guest today talking about web shows we we talk a lot about that and we mm -hmm. think that's a crucial part of a social media marketing strategy yes. uh, you you need to think about having your own web show Definitely. or at least at least having a lot of videos on YouTube yes for sure and you know Shahar I think what you just said there is repeating uh, they're small strategies that make the hugest difference mm -hmm. so make a huge difference so get started uh, make sure you have those components in place do a little at a time but do them because yes. do it because it definitely will impact your bottom line to the better it, it, will, it will and knowing how to negotiate can just change the yes. face of your business that's right and it's applicable to your business today and it might be applicable to your business tomorrow always 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 okay so see you next time see ya